In this Learn Electrics video, we help you to understand and use the resistance tables in the on-site guide and in Guidance Note 3. They are easy to use if you understand what they are telling you and if you have the correct formula to use. Some of the frequently asked questions have included How do I know what resistance to expect for a certain length of cable? If I know the resistance, can I find the length? If I measure R1 plus R2 for a 20 meter cable, do I have to include the length of the line and the length of the earth in the calculation, making it 40 meters? In fact, what are the calculations and how do I use the resistance tables? This is the resistance table as found in the books and you should have one or more of these books with you when working. It's the same table in both books. If you have the on-site guide, this will be table I1. And for guidance note 3, it will be table B1. The tables give values of resistance for a standard temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Start by looking at the headers for the table. Table columns are headed as line conductor and protective conductor in the table. But the headings can be used for conductor 1 and conductor 2 if you are not testing a protective conductor or earth. You can use them for line and neutral, or L1 and L2, or L2 and L3, etc. in a three-phase system. The resistance value shown in each row of the table is in milliohms per meter, thousandths of an ohm per meter length of the conductor. Why milliohms? In ohms, there would be lots of zeros to manipulate, but this way we have non-zero numbers which are easier for our eyes to understand. To convert milliohms into ohms, simply divide by 1000. The first thing we need to know about our cable is the cross-sectional area, or CSA. So let's make sure of what this is. Cable size, or CSA, is measured in square millimetres across the cut surface of a conductor. So what size is a 1 square millimetre conductor? If this was a square conductor, it would be one millimeter on each side. But conductors are round, and this circle is 1.13 millimeters in diameter, but its cross-sectional area is still only one square millimeter, the same area, or CSA, as the square above it. Look at this 2.5 square millimeter conductor. Nothing here relates to 2.5 millimeters. If it was a square conductor, it would have sides of length 1.58 millimeters. And, if it was round, as we normally expect, then the diameter is 1.784 millimetres. Let's do the maths on this. The area of the square conductor is 1.58 squared, or 1.58 multiplied by 1.58. Try this in your calculator. The answer is 2.5 square millimetres when rounded up. And the circle will use the Pythagoras theorem where the area of a circle is pi r squared. Or it can be pi d squared over 4. It comes to the same thing. And this is the version that we will use, pi d squared over 4. Put those numbers into a calculator and you'll have an area for the circle, a CSA of 2.5 square millimetres. We can make some calculations now using the tables. If you want to learn the calculations, if you want to be good at this, then pause the video as we go along and practice the calculations that we are doing. The more you practice, the better you become. First, let's remind ourselves of the relationship between size, length and resistance in conductors. If the CSA increases, then the resistance will decrease. They go in opposite directions. Bigger cable sizes, smaller resistances. And if the length increases, then the resistance will also increase. Longer cables, more resistance. Here are the two formulas that we will use. Get them the right way round, and the rest of the calculation is easy. Do you want to know how many ohms of resistance a cable should be, or are we trying to find the length of a cable when we already know its resistance? Pause the video and take a moment to look at the formulas. Let's begin with testing a single 1 square millimeter conductor as an end to end test. There is only one cable, and we should therefore select the correct row from the table. The row with one for the line and nothing else, just a dash for the protective conductor. 
A question then. If we have a single one square millimetre copper conductor with an end to end resistance of 0 0.31 ohms, what is the length of the conductor? Using table I1 in the on site guide and selecting the correct row, we are told that a one square millimetre conductor has a resistance of 18.10 milliohms per metre length. The formula to use is the measured resistance divided by the tabulated milliohms per metre taken from the table. But we have a problem. The measured resistance is in ohms and not in milliohms. The solution? Multiply the measured resistance by 1000 and convert it to milliohms. So our calculation now is 0 0.31 ohms multiplied by 1000 and then divide this by 18.10 milliohms per metre. And out pops our answer. The length is 17.12 metres long. 17 metres after rounding off. We can move on and test two conductors now. Suppose we had a circuit installed in 2.5 square millimetre twin earth with a length of 30 metres. For standard twin earth, the line will be 2.5 and the earth or CPC 1.5. Choosing the correct row from the table, we see that the value to apply is 19.51 milliohms per metre length of the twin and earth cable. The resistance, the R1 plus R2 in this case, is the tabulated milliohms multiplied by the length and then divided by 1000 to convert it back into ohms, what we should see on our test metre. So 19.51 milliohms multiplied by 30 metres and divided by 1000 gives us 0 0.5853 ohms. Rounding up, we can say that R1 plus R2 is 0 0.59 ohms. We might be asked to check the combined resistance of the line and neutral in a 25 meter radial circuit incorporating 4 mm twin and earth cable. And this can be easily achieved by linking the two conductors at one end and testing at the other. Now we must choose the correct row in the table. 4mm and 4mm has a milliohm per metre value of 9.22 milliohms per metre length. The resistance of L plus N is 9.22 times 25 and divided by 1000. And the calculator tells us that this is 0 0.2305 ohms. We can say, after rounding, that the line plus neutral resistance is 0 0.23 ohms. We might need to check the resistance of just the line conductor in this radial circuit. Our metre leads will not reach to both ends to measure end to end, so we can link the line and neutral at the one end, as shown, and then test at the other. As both conductors are the same size, we just halve the answer to find the resistance of the line conductor on its own. If L plus N is 0 0.23 ohms, then the line is 0 0.115 ohms on its own. A little more information for you on cable lengths. Lots of questions ask, if I have a 10 meter length of twin and earth and want to calculate the R1 plus R2, do I use 20 meters as the length, 10 meters for the line and 10 meters for the earth? The answer is no. For two conductors, we only use the length one way, not there and back. The milliohms value shown in the table takes into account the length of each conductor. On this slide, I've added two extra columns shown in green. These columns show the resistance for the two conductors as appropriate, and we will see how they add up to the number in the rightmost column. Using our 2.5 by 1.5 twin earth cable as our example, we can see from the table that 2.5 square millimetre conductor on its own is 7.41 milliohms per metre, and we can enter that for conductor number one. Now do the same for the 1.5 conductor on its own. This is 12.10 milliohms per metre, and this can now go into the column for conductor number two. So we have 7.41, which takes into account the length of conductor number one, and we have 12.10, which includes the length of conductor number two. Added together, they come to 19.51 milliohms per metre length, measured just one way. There's nothing more for us to do. It's all included in the numbers in the table. So if this was 10 metre cable, 
it would be just 19.51 multiplied by 10 meters and divided by 1000. A brief summary. The resistance table is the same in the on-site guide and in guidance note 3. Do you want to know the length of a certain cable or the expected resistance of the cable? Be sure to use the correct formula to calculate this. When making calculations, convert everything into ohms or everything into milliohms before starting the calculation. Ohms multiplied by 1000 is milliohms, and milliohms divided by 1000 gives ohms. Measure the length of the cable in one direction only, not there and back, as the tables take account of the length of each conductor as appropriate and a bigger CSA will result in a smaller resistance, whilst a longer length will make the resistance increase. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful and that you've added a little extra to your mental toolbox. In the later video, we will look at what happens to cable resistances when the temperature changes and how we can make compensations for this and adjust our ZS and R1 plus R2 readings to suit. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.